I don't know whether to say very good afternoon or whatever, but it's good to talk to you as far as Shah Faisal sir. Kashmir last one week has just completely altered the political landscape. Uh, can you just say a few words about what happened, what it means? Uh, I think 5th August is a, it's a watershed in the history of Jammu and Kashmir because on that day, uh, that entity called the Jammu and Kashmir state, along with all its institutions, its history, its identity, its people, their, their dignity, their memory, everything was demolished uh, with a mere stroke of a resolution or what you, are, what you can call it or a statement of maybe 10 minutes. And then this entire edifice c comes down at once. Uh, I recall I was at home and I think there, have, there were a lot of restrictions in Kashmir Valley uh, people were anticipating something massive is going to happen. But that precise occasion when the Home Minister had to read this statement in the Parliament, everybody was glued to television sets and everybody was expecting that something very, very dangerous is happening. But people still had tremendous disbelief that this is not going to happen. Because over a period of the last 70 years, those who had been reading the constitution, engaging with the Indian state, they had still built a certain amount of trust with the people that whatever happens to India, but then still, there will still be certain amount of constitutionalism or respect for the constitution, respect for democracy and respect for the promises that have been made to people of Jammu and Kashmir over a, you know, the turn of the century. And, but when it happened, I'm sure many, many people are still not able to figure out what has happened. So I, I said that it was like a nuclear bomb I mean, being thrown and when everybody just froze around and people still could not make sense that what has happened. The, the, what about, the, you know, this strange thing about nuclear bombs is that it comes with such abrupt, abruptness. It's totally unexpected. Uh, it's very hard to know the scale of damage that it does. And then... The damage the lasts for generations. And it lasts for generations. मतलब कहने का मतलब है कि जो 5 अगस्त को भारत की सरकार ने जम्मू एंड कश्मीर राज्य के साथ किया वो न सिर्फ गैर संवैधानिक था मगर एक न्यूक्लियर बम जैसा था जो पूरे एक राज्य के इतिहास को मिटा देने का काम वहां के लोगों आज क्या महसूस कर रहे हैं देखिए पिछले 1947 से जब से एक्सेशन हुआ आ, एक्सेशन अपने आप में कंटेस्टेड एक एक्सेशन था because the accession, this was against the spirit of the partition. Spirit of partition was something else that demographics will decide, rulers will decide that which state will go where. But that time, the state of Jammu and Kashmir, it made a very, very unique choice and it stayed with India based on the presumption that India is a democratic country. Uske baad 1953 mein, when the prime minister of this state, he was handcuffed by a petty police officer and taken away. That was the generation of my grandparents. Uh, my grandparents Yeah, too, so yeah. they felt betrayed. So for next 30 years, Kashmir become a, became a battle zone. And then came 87. 87, elections happened. Elections were rigged. One more, once more subversion of democracy. And it was a generation of my parents. So they felt betrayed. And we saw 30 years of conflict. This generation had not exactly seen a betrayal, but we had memories of betrayal, which came to us from our forefathers. But now this generation has seen a massive betrayal. It's like robbing an entire population, an entire people of their identity in the broad daylight, robbing them of their, of their history, robbing them of their symbols, of their pride, of their dignity. And that's why I feel now that maybe immediately you may not be able to uh, imagine the scale of devastation, but with time, we will come to understand that this is something which is going to be a generational injury. And only time will tell that how much scale of devastation we are going to witness. For you personally and your colleagues who have who decided to forge a political path 
and were offering some degree of hope for mainstream politicians because there's been a disillusionment with other mainstream politicians in Kashmir. Uh, what does this mean in terms of you know, trying to renew that pledge with the people? Uh, that's one question. Secondly, have there been detentions? Has there been repression by the state? What are the kind of protests? There were basically, I think, three schools of thought in Kashmir. One, those people, have a massive uh, majority, I would say, who had absolutely no faith in Indian constitution. And then there was this section of population which had some faith in Indian constitution. And then there were this very, very minuscule minority who believed in integration and had a absolute faith in Indian constitution. So there were people like us who were somewhere in, a, in the buffer zone trying to tell the other larger, the largest constituency that there are still some popular, you know, some solutions available within the Indian constitution. So when I joined politics or my colleagues joined politics, the idea was that we will try to figure out something within the constitution and constitution has some sort of scope because the prime ministers of India from Atal Bihari Vajpayee, VP Singh, from Jawala Nehru. So we had been hearing a lot of promises like sky is the limit, Kashmiriyat, Jamhuriyat, Insaniyat, many other homilies which were dished out to Kashmiris in the last 70 years. So that some and the you know the, the now these two categories have been treated together now you talked about detentions around 800 political activists including two past chief ministers of the state they have been arrested in a most humiliating manner i am told that most of the important political activists who have been carrying the tricolor in the state for the last 70 years they are this time facing public safety act and have been put in jail and worse treatment is being given to them and which reflects that, you know, which vindicates that constituency which was always saying that we have absolutely no faith in Indian constitution and Indians cannot be trusted, they could not be trusted in 53, they should not be trusted in 87, they should not have been trusted in 2019. That is something which is extremely worrisome for me. Yeah, because it makes the task of anybody who's trying to forge a link very, very difficult. It makes peace building impossible there. It makes, it takes conflict to a new phase of intensification and it will also transform the conflict. Till now, maybe the aspiration was that we want some sort of resolution. Now, because there is an insult, even if you return Article 370 back to us tomorrow, it will not be, I think, it will not heal. Because now the positions has positions have changed all of a sudden. The level of we would talk about alienation. Now the scale is estrangement. Alienation to estrangement. Yeah, it's now complete breakdown. And those people who are saying that there has been no law and order situation yesterday there, or maybe in the last four days in Kashmir, hundreds and thousands of security forces controlling every individual, every soul, every voice, every throat. It will take time for people to come out and to express and assert. And we have seen these assertions do not happen overnight. And these assertions are extremely lethal, fatal, extremely dangerous. And my worry, one more, one more thing which I need to predict, I, I just wish that it's wrong, is that in an attempt to integrate the territory, without integrating the people. You know, what India has done is that it had integrated the conflict. And security, mil military, ultimately it's finally the people who matter. Jammu, Ladakh and the Kashmir have now sort of been dismembered in this very, very, of course illegal but also very queer way. Um, are there any conversations happening in between or? Uh... We had this parliamentarian from Ladakh speaking in parliament and trying to completely uh, white out the voices from other parts of his region, saying that Ladakhis have been for the first time provided an opportunity, not realizing that he was speaking for a very small section of Buddhists which he represented, not even the entire community of Buddhists and the entire Kargil region was not in favor of what has been happening and we have seen tremendous amount of agitation happening in Kargil in the last few days. And sooner the people realize in Leh also what it means for them. You will see 
you will see voices of dissent in Ladakh also, in Leh particularly, Buddhist voices, because this partition is a communal partition. It's a redox of 1947, and there are always liberal, there are always saner voices which do not want states or regions on people to be divided on religious lines. I mean, you've been very kind of in the, to have this conversation. I just want to end up by saying, do you have any message for the saner voices or the not so sane voices in India? The message for India is that what happened to Jammu and Kashmir state today, it can happen to Bombay tomorrow. Bombay can be a union territory. Bombay's entire history can be wiped out. To control states, to demolish federal institutions here, now parliament is there to take care. And this parliament, which, which was there to build a nation and to bring all people together and protect the ideas of federalism, cooperative federalism, the same parliament is now being used to demolish this democracy brick by brick. And my hope is that people of this country will recognize that parliament has become the voice of the majority and it has become a majoritarian institution. And if those people who are celebrating today for dismemberment of the Jammu and Kashmir state, they should just wait for their own terms when their states will also go one by one and their identities, their communities, their histories will also be snatched from them one day. Thank you very much. Thank you.